Hello! I've been looking forward to making this video on the origins of Go, but it's been a little bit challenging figuring what I should put in the video and what I should leave out. So in the comments below, let me know what you think should have been included. Also, if you like the content, please like, share, and subscribe. Every little bit helps, and it is greatly appreciated. Go is a systems language that is great for writing large server software. To understand why Go was created, we're going to have to look at some hardware trends. In 1998, Google was created with the goal of becoming the prominent search engine. Now, this was going to require a lot of processing power. Not only were they going to have to index the internet, they're also going to have to respond to many, many, many user search requests all at the same time. Now, prior to 2007, Google developers were using languages like C++, which was based on a language called C. Now, after all of these years, since the 1970s and the 1980s, why would we need a new language in 2007? Well, to answer this, we need to look at our hardware trends, particularly the frequency of the CPU. Now, as you can see, the speed of the CPU has been, can, been increasing over time. Now, keep in mind, this is not a linear graph. So, I mean, 1, 10, 100, you know, 1,000. Literally, a CPU today could be a thousand times faster than a CPU in the 1970s. So as we can see over time, we got a lot of performance from just making these chips faster. Now, obviously the makers of the, C the, the CPUs were trying to make them faster, but they ran into some, uh, some issues, particularly I believe with heat constraints that, you know, it was harder to keep making these faster and faster. So to in keep, to continually increase performance, they had to do something and that was to add more cores to the CPUs. So as we can see here, obviously a lot more cores to the CPU. So now, great, now finally we can run stuff in parallel, which we could still run things in parallel on C++. But as you can see back here in the 1970s and 1980s, there weren't multiple core CPUs. So this wasn't a consideration when it was designed. So it's just not as intuitive or as much fun to program in a language where it wasn't a core feature when it was initially designed. As mentioned earlier, Golang was created by three developers from Google, Rob Pike, Robert Griesemer, and Ken Thompson. Rob Pike worked on the Unix operating system, which if you're familiar with the Linux operating system, Linux is derived from Unix. Also worked on Plan 9, the Inferno operating system, Limbo programming language, Sawzall, and developing the UTF encoding scheme with Ken Thompson which grew in popularity to become the most used encoding scheme to this day. Uh, Robert Griesemer worked on the Google V8 JavaScript engine, which is used in the Chrome browser as well as in Node.js, uh, Sawzall, Java Hotspot Virtual Machine, and the StrongTalk system. Ken Thompson designed and implemented the original Unix operating system, created the B programming language with Dennis Ritchie, which was a predecessor to the C programming language, which C was a predecessor to the C++ programming language. Uh, worked on Plan 9, uh, developing the UTF encoding scheme, Sawzall, and jointly received the Turing Award with Dennis Ritchie for the implementation of the Unix operating system. As you can see, these guys go way back and have a wealth of knowledge and experience uh, to draw upon when, when it comes to deciding what they want and don't want in their programming language. We have a quote by Ken Thompson that says, the three of us got together and decided that we hated C++. So obviously when they created Golang, they were going to make something that they themselves would enjoy coding in. So one of these features is garbage collection, which is the automatic memory management. When I'm done with a variable, I don't need to worry about releasing the memory for that variable. The Go runtime looks at things such as scope, and say if a variable can no longer be reached, well, it's going to go ahead and free up that memory for you. Golang compile times are close to four times faster than C++, which is a big plus as you get into bigger projects. And as we mentioned earlier, the compiled code for Golang is fast. And when it comes to parallelism, Golang was created when we already had multi-core processors. So this was a design choice from the very beginning. So they made it very easy to use. With Go routines, we just have to put the 
keyword go with the space in front of it to go ahead and fire up our, our go routine. Also communication between go routines is very easy with channels. Also, it's very easy to deploy. We have a, we have a self-contained binary. So we don't have a virtual machine that we need to say, if we send it to another PC, we don't have a virtual machine that we need to keep updated on that virtual machine. And the runtime is compiled into every app. So, I mean, Go doesn't need to be installed on that other machine. We just need to send that binary. I could compile down here on my Windows machine to a Linux machine, send it to that Linux machine, and it doesn't need to have Golang installed on it. It can just run that application. Uh, we are, we're also using UTF-8 encoding, so we don't need to guess which encoding we're using. And UTF-8 is the most common, so that makes it a little bit easier. Uh, Go is also simple to read. Uh, when you have many people working on a project, code may be written once, but it will be read many, many, many times. So it's always nice that it's simple to read because, well, big projects, there's a lot of reading involved. And we have a very consistent standard library. There have been very few changes uh, over the years, which means we have very few breaking changes. So it's nice that our code from a few years ago will, will still run. Now, keep in mind that as I say that, as of February 2022, they are adding some generics to the language, but I don't believe that to be a breaking change. Golang is a great fit for scalable servers and distributed systems for the cloud, as seen with Docker and Kubernetes, which are created on Golang. The core packages include code for web servers and network connections, which makes sense because our three developers we're working in a heavily networked environment. So yes, makes sense to put those in the core packages. Now, one of the issues we may run into is we're gonna get many more requests than we have threads to assign them to. So to fix this, we're gonna assign many Go routines to a single thread. So this way we can handle many, many requests all at the same time and deal with them with concurrency. So looking at this here, uh, actually this, this diagram here could be a little bit better. I probably should have several little arrows representing the Go routines uh, assigned to each thread. So anyway, and if a thread gets blocked, the Go schedule can move Go routines to another thread. So it just automatically moves us around and we don't have to deal with that complexity. Now, when I say Go has a different approach for many things, I'm talking about from many programming languages and not all programming languages. Obviously the programming languages that these three developers help develop or took inspiration from, well, the approach might be very similar. So Go has no classes and no type inheritance. So inheritance is inheriting the properties of superclass into a base class. Now in Go, we're gonna use composition. So for instance, we could take a base struct and we can embed it into a child struct. And now that child struct has access to the base structs, methods, and fields. Also, Go is very explicit. Like for instance, we're not gonna have you know, implicit type conversion. So we're not gonna just change a type from a string to an int. Um, it also took inspiration from Tony Hoare's paper on communicating sequential processes. A program is composed of parallel processes that have no shared state. Processes communicate and synchronize using channels. So with parallel processes, obviously we're using Go routines. So instead of using some shared memory, we're gonna be communicating via Go channels. Also, we have slices. So instead of just having an array, we can have a slice, which is just a, a part of an array. So this can be resized using a pen. It can be, uh, now these are references, so they can be passed to other functions without making a copy. So there's not a lot of overhead there. It doesn't, not a big uh, performance hit. And of course, you know, we could always use the array should we want to. Also, uh, we have first class, first class functions. So functions can pass and receive other functions. One of the goals of Go is simplicity hiding complexity. So we wanna be able to write simple Go code that accomplishes very complex things. For instance, if I wanted to spin up a couple Go routines, I just need to put the Go keyword in front of those functions. And I don't need to worry about which CPU core or which thread it's gonna run on. 
the Go runtime schedule is going to go ahead and handle that for me. Another one is garbage collection. Memory management is not the responsibility of the developer, so I don't need to worry about releasing memory back to the system. Also, this uh, part on concurrency, I went ahead and just stole this part from a uh, PowerPoint from Rob Pike because I thought it was real simple and to the point. Concurrency is the ability to write your program as independently executing pieces. So obviously our Go routines are going to be executing our code and to communicate between those, well, we have channels, which is are really simple to use. And then to co coordinate it all, we have the select statement. And now we have interfaces which are just a set of methods and as you know methods describe behavior so variables with the same methods have the same behaviors thus can be used as that interface and then of course when it comes to package management the go git command is a great for open source and package management possibly the most important goal of go is simplicity quote rob pike Complexity is multiplicative. Fixing one problem by making one part more complex slowly but surely adds complexity to other parts. In the long run, simplicity is the key to good software. Now, the key word is multiplicative. So if we're not careful, the complexity can grow and get out of hand very quickly. Readability is paramount. Readable code is reliable code. And it's easier to understand, extend, fix, and maintain. To quote Ken Thompson, the three of us got together and decided that we hated C++. We, st we started off with the idea that all three of us had to be talked into every feature of the language. So as you can see, they were not in competition to try and have every feature every other language has because that would add to the complexity. And as like we said, uh, the complexity can grow out of hand very quickly. Now we have a quote from Guido Van Rossum. Now there's uh, many other people with similar quotes, but he says, code is read more often than it is written. Code should always be written in a way that promotes readability. Now, at Google, they have about 132,000 employees. Most of these are engineers. So, code is written once, but it's going to be read many times. So, by keeping it, keeping it simple, well, we can save a lot of time while it's being read. It's only written once, but it's, it's going to, I guarantee you, it's going to be read several times over. So, and this is the one, simplicity is probably the key feature. If there's one of them, I couldn't hammer home hard enough. That's it. But if you like the content, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, and a special thank you to everyone who's sharing content on other platforms. That really does help me out. So, uh, I hope you liked it and have a great day.